What is going on fam? It is your boy John Michael Howe. Today I'm going to be showing you how I mix and produce pop vocals. So let's get right into it. The song I'm using as the example today is a song I just released. It's called My Kind of Beautiful and it's a song I did with my friend Jeremiah Miller who was on The Voice. He's an amazing singer. He's very talented and this song is actually a duet between me and him so it will be a cool dynamic to kind of go through. So without further ado, Let's play the first part. Baby, do you know? You're my kind of beautiful. All right, that's enough. Um, if you want to check out the whole song, the link will be in the description. So feel free to do so. But let's just hop right into the uh, processing chain. The first thing that I have going on is the Waves Tune real time. I don't do hard tuning like Melodyne because it takes a long time and I found that if you use an auto tune like Waves Tune real time, it actually forces you to make the actual takes better and more on pitch. So you're not doing as much processing in post and you're not, you know, getting bad takes and trying to make something good out of them. And so here are my settings for this guy. Boom. Key of A. Um, and that's specific to this song, obviously, but just so you know. Next up is the VMR. This is a plugin made by Slate Digital. I highly recommend you use the Slate Digital plugins because they make some amazing stuff and it sounds really, really, really good. First thing is this virtual channel. That's to mimic the harmonics in a real analog board or preamp. And it sounds good. Secondly, we got the, um, what I forgot what this thing's called. We have that one on there. Everyone knows what that's called except for me, evidently. And here are the settings that I have on it right now. Let's kind of go through that. Here's what I'll do. I will turn this stuff off and go one by one here. That's a good idea, Jermichael. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, we got a lot to go through on this guy. So, all right. So here is the vocal. Let's do this. Here's the vocal, just the tuning on, dry. Baby, do you know? You're my kind of beautiful. There's that, and then we're going to activate uh, the virtual channel. Baby, do you know? That you're my kind of beautiful. You probably didn't hear that big of a difference, but it adds some harmonics and things that sound real nice. Um, okay, this uh, this uh, SSL channel. There we go. Baby, That's what it's know? called. That you're my kind of beautiful. So we're kind of taking. A um, little bit of this, almost as 3K. I always take a little bit of that 3-ish K um, off a little bit. And as you can see, it's just a little bit. It's a minus about 1.5 dB. Because around 3K on vocals, at least for my vocal tone and most guys' vocal tone, is really kind of harsh and piercing. It's that like part of the vocal that really, really jumps out, especially if you're listening on a phone. And so you don't want too much of that. So I dialed that down a little bit. And then it looks like I boosted some low end over here. Baby, do you know? Oh, no, that's not low end. My bad. That's, that's 1.3K. You know? That's this frequency. You're my kind of beautiful. Baby, a little bit of that like radio sound, but not too much. Let's see if I undo, we'll just go back. Yes, it will. Whoops. What have I done? That's okay. I'll just guess. Baby, do you know? And then lastly on this guy, we have a little bit of the low end dialed out. About 4 dB. This muddy 200 hertz. Now let's activate the distressor. What am I doing? Baby, do you know? The distressor is really good for... Um, you know, just a pre-compression kind of thing to get everything more of a similar level. I have the ratio on 3.1, so it's not too harsh, but it's not too soft. Baby, do you know that you're my kind of beautiful? That's just kind of evening it out before it goes through any of my other processing. Is it a little too much? Not really in this context. Maybe in a ballady context, um, this is probably set to a little bit too aggressive of a setting. But in this context of this song, it's very pop. Um, it's very in your face. So the setting on this kind of mimics that feeling. All right, here is this guy. Forgot what it's called because I'm like 21. Baby, do you know? 
So you hear what that's doing, taking out actually a decent amount of 60 on here. And then over here, I'm shelving off up to 129. Typically on vocals, you want to shelf off some of that low end. That's like, you're not even going to, the vocals not even really making any of that low end. It's just like weird wind and the hum in your room. So you want to take some of that off. And what else, what else am I doing here? Three. Yeah, I'm taking some more of that muddiness off. So I have this set all the way down to 400 Hertz. Took like four dB off of that. And then this is like this revival channel thing that Slate makes. It's really good because um, it adds some of that like 10K at the top and then some of that, I don't know, lower end goodness. And I just kind of mess around with that until I get something that I like. Baby, do you know? This is be exaggerated. Kind of kinda pull it back to about Baby, do you know? do you kinda beautiful? Yeah. So that's that guy. Slate Digital. Oh, wait. No, there's one more. Oh, that's just the trimmer. That doesn't do much. Except for trim off some gain, gain up. So that's just real boring. So we'll move on to the next thing. Here is the TDR Nova. Baby, do you know? And this is a multiband compressor dealio dot doodle. So um, once again, just tightening up that low end. Low end is, you know, especially if you're using a mic like this, which this is the mic I recorded it on and I'm all like up in it like this, you're going to get a lot of low end. So it's really important to control that low end. And I just have this compression set to hit at a certain level, Baby, do you know? ducks it down. Do you my kind of beautiful? TDR Nova, it's a free plugin. You should get it because it's real good. And then we move on finally to our first EQ here. Baby, do you know? So what am I doing? I'm taking out a lot of this. Baby, do you know? Let me take these bands out and I'll add them kind of one by one. Baby, do you know? Let me turn this up so you can hear it better. Baby, do you know? Baby, do you know? Baby, do you know? Baby, do you know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sound is something that is typically in a lot of vocals and cheaper mics, so I take that out. Baby, do you know? Once again, we're ducking out some more of that high end. Baby, do you know? Baby, do you know? Coming back and ducking about 3 dB at a um, thousand hertz. Baby, do you know? It's just like weird sounding frequencies we don't want, you know. Baby, do you know? Ducking a lot more Baby, of those. Do you know? High mids right there. Baby, do you know? Let's see what this guy sounds like. Baby, do you know? Yeah, just like weird things and sounds I don't want in there. And then we're at about 4K here. Baby, do you know? Ducking off some of that brittleness. And then we're going to move on to our next EQ. This is where my processing gets crazy here because I'm adding. A lot of EQ. Baby, do you know? You kind of have to add a lot of EQ with this mic because although this mic is easy to use and you got the pop filter that's really conveniently over it like this, it's difficult to EQ sometimes. Baby, do you know? Taking out some more 200. We're taking out 1.7. Baby, do you know? It's like, whoosh. It's like nobody wants that. Nobody. Taking out more 5. And then we're taking out some eight, and then we're just shelving off. Um, we just we're only shelving to eighteen there. Yeah, stuff that you're not gonna hear. Most people can't even hear up to twenty uh, k. They can only really hear up to like seventeen or eighteen k. I've tested this on a few people. I can only hear up to like eighteen k. Baby, do you know? Once again, took out some more low end. Here's something that I'll note with EQ, since I'm not going super specific through all this stuff, is with EQ on vocals, you're, the goal is to make the vocal sound like you're just singing to somebody and you're hearing, or someone's singing to you and you're hearing it and you're trying to match on the computer what you're hearing, if that makes sense. If someone's singing to you in a room, it sounds right. It doesn't sound like there's a weird EQ because it's real, it's life, it's what's coming out of someone's voice and uh, 
you know, with EQ, you're trying to replicate that same feeling of just hearing someone in a room um, or a hall or like wherever you're listening to someone at a concert. You're trying to replicate that same, um, you know, authentic frequency that you're hearing whenever somebody sings and they're right next to you and you're hearing it travel through actual air and it's analog coming straight from someone's voice. That's the whole point. So I want to encourage you with messing around with EQ just try to get it to sound real and authentic and mess around with it a lot. That's really how you learn EQ. Like I could show you how I'm specifically processing this vocal, but no one's going to remember the exact frequencies that I'm telling you about right now. I mean, you might remember general things like duck out some of the low end, duck out some of that brittle high end, but really the lesson to be learned here is just tweak it until it feels and sounds right to you. All right, last EQ. <laughs> Dramatic pause for effect, by the way. <laughs> Baby, do you know? Do you my kind of beautiful? Once again, I'm taking off a lot of that high end because I know once this compression hits, it's going to get crazy. Um, I started on this song, actually, using this compressor, this LA-2A, the UAD one. It sounds really, really nice. Baby, do you know? Do you my kind of beautiful? Yeah, real gentle. I love it. Baby, do you know? I always do two compressors. I do the first one, um, not too intense, kind of medium intensity. And then on my second compressor, I use a more intense compressor like an 1176, for example, this 1176. And let's see, I think I might have all buttons in on this guy. Do I? Yeah, add all buttons in. So I'm really just grabbing anything that hops out of this first compressor that's too loud that the first compressor doesn't grab this thing just comes and smacks it down Baby, do you know? just whoosh. Do you're my kind of beautiful. also that like reverb you're hearing is straight up just coming from this room i really need to get a sound treated yes i do then lastly in the chain we have low sys deesser this takes away the s -s 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 sound on all the vocals Baby, most of do it you know? You're my kind of beautiful. So there you go. So I'm processing my vocal. Let's move on. Oh, that's what I've always loved about you Here comes Jeremiah. Baby, do you know? You're my kind of beautiful. Same thing for him. You got the kind of go the world don't know. Let's see. For him, I know I did some things differently. Maybe it's on this end. Let me let me check up here. Yeah, I went back. I ducked more high end from his voice because how he was singing. This gets more into technical, like how people sing. Some people's vocal cords are thicker and bigger, and therefore it's harder for. For example, from like me, I'm like six four, six three, six four. I don't know, somewhere around there. Um, I have thicker vocal cords and. Because of that, my the tone of my voice is like still pitched higher, but the actual depth of my voice is a lot lower. And so whenever I'm singing up here on Baby Do You Know, I'm having to sing like in this very powerful compressed place. Baby Do You Know. Because I can't sing that unsupported and softly like Jeremiah singing it. Jeremiah is like 6'1 or something, and he has a naturally... Um, higher pitched voice so he's able to hit these notes unsupported because of that i say all that to get to this because of that you're getting a lot more air sound from his voice than you're going to get from mine on this specific part so i'm ducking or on this specific song so i'm ducking a lot more of that high end you can see over here i'm literally just like taking that high end and just like bringing most of that like 7 to 10k just bringing it down uh because we want to make a better balance between mine and his voice. Here are our voices together. Baby, do you know? So again, automation. I'm going to want to match his level the way it sounds. Not, not the exact dBs, but the way it sounds to the level mine was at. Never mix with your eyes, people. Mix with your ears. So only 0.3 dB is a change nobody in, ever in history will hear. Um, yeah, so let's listen to this whole part now that I've gone through all that. Baby, do you know? Do you 
my kind of beautiful You don't fit the mold That's what I've always loved about you most Baby, do you know You're my kind of beautiful I'm already sold You got that kind of gold The world don't know That kind of gold The world don't know Yeah, so me and Jeremiah were trying to work up some sort of small pre-chorus turnaround thing and we figured it would be best to just repeat the very last line we did. So on this pre-chorus part, we got some overdrive to add some texture. We had to mix it up. We couldn't just do something like this. We couldn't. I mean, we couldn't just do this. It felt weird to us. So we're like, let's re-record it. Let's do something a little bit different with the melody. That will suffice all of our needs of this little pre-chorus turnaround thing. And really all I'm doing with the CQ is shelving off some high end. Obviously, I just said adding the overdrive. That gives it that radio sound. And let me just take this opportunity right here randomly right now to say... There is no one size fits all to any production, to any mix, to any song. So whenever it comes to creating and producing, always do what fits right with the song. Don't do something, don't mix something a certain way because simply because I told you to. These are just general guidelines that I'm trying to lay down and just a, a way to do it. T stereotypically, if you're working with vocals, you will have to shelf out some low end. Now, maybe there are some mics or some scenarios where you don't have to do that. Um, but I'm just showing you how I did it specifically for this song. And uh, here's the chorus. I'm on top. Jeremiah's on bottom. Who could ever, who could ever love me? Swap. You've always been the perfect bottom. He's on top. So on this chorus, um, we're kind of doubling each other. And so this goes back to the one, not one size fits all thing is typically in a mix, you want to have doubles of your vocal. And in most of the songs I do, I do double my vocal. I get a stereo double of, you know, all the leads. And in this case, I didn't because me and Jeremiah were kind of doubling each other on that, where I was singing the high one, he was singing the low one, then we swapped. We're being each other's double. And also with this song is I'm trying to let that uniqueness of our voices shine and not get buried in other backgrounds and other doubles so that you can differentiate in your mind between whenever I'm singing and whenever he's singing. So both of the sounds are related, but... We decided not to do doubles. Or I guess I decided not to do doubles um, because I didn't want to overcrowd what you were hearing sonically with the vocals. I wanted it to be, be very singer songwritery. There is one person singing and then there is another person singing. But I mean, I mean, I just worked on a song. I've been working on a song, creating a song uh, where I literally I did a stereo double of my lead and then I did 32 parts, straight up 32 parts throughout the whole song. And, you know, sometimes you're going to have songs like If You Ever Want to Be In Love by uh, James Bay, and then you're going to have Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish, where with one of them, you only need your one vocal, and then the other one, the whole song is just vocals. So do what's right for the song always in every scenario. Don't do something just because I did it a certain way. Baby, do you know? Let's move on to this next chorus. We add in one part, real simple. And then we have this really fun part. I love doing this kind of stuff in my songs. Have a little vocal part. Ad libs. We didn't feel like the song needed an actual bridge. Uh, we just felt like it needed some sort of turnaround slash breakdown thing to, uh, you know, set this next chorus up. A little like jam section and the reason we didn't write a write a full-on bridge is first of all 
we don't want the song to be like nine minutes long and the song's already like three minutes long and also this song is so wordy because of phonetically where the words are landing on the beats i mean we have like baby if you could only see the you that i see like that that kind of rhythm to your words and phonetics makes the song fill up very fast so we felt like let's not give people more words to have to remember we want the catchy part to just stick in their heads and and leave it and so we did this breakdown where i did half of the parts here jeremiah did the other half together Ad libs, you know. Baby, if you could only see the you that I see, never again would you ever ask me who could ever, who could ever love me, love me. And so on this first one, I did the harmony. Or sorry, the second course I did the harmony. Third course, Jeremiah does the harmony. So we're just trying to mix and match up the whole thing. I start out on the first verse. And so on the next verse, I don't do lead until the second half. And then first chorus, I think I start out on lead. Just kidding. He starts out on the chorus. The next chorus, I start out leading the chorus. So the last chorus, I believe he would be back in leading it. Maybe. If you could only yep. see the there you go. Continuity. It's important. Let's see uh, what else we need to go over here. Um, effects. Effects are a big deal. Let's go over those. On this song, I'm not using many, but here's a very powerful one. Let me hit up the chorus. I'll loop it in. You're my kind of beautiful. So we have this doubler thing going on. That's not it. This is it. Once again, CLA plugin, verb suite, this doubled vocal setting that's under the vocals. This thing just really fills out any vocal part. It's really cool. Really subtle. Great tool. There's another great thing that does a um, very similar thing. And that is this guy, Doubler by Waves, I believe. That makes it get really wide. My video stopped, so I had to come back in here. That's annoying. Actually, my video didn't stop. Pro Tools did, because Pro Tools sucks. I don't like Pro Tools. I'm, all, I'm actually Pro Tools certified, fun fact, but I still hate Pro Tools. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Pro Tools users. It's just weird. Um, all right, so that Doubler effect through literally like 90% of the song is <laughs> literally the only effect being used as you can see here are all the sins uh, but we do add a little bit of reverb on this part my kind of beautiful. it's kind of a neat trick on certain words certain phrases just pop up the reverb pop up the delay for dramatic effect my kind of beautiful. Reverb sins or delay sins. Feel my kind of beautiful. And these ab libs we left wet. You're my kind of beautiful. You're my kind of beautiful, yeah. You're my kind of beautiful. So that's pretty much what's going on in the song. I mean, there's not much happening in terms of effects and things. That's specific for this song, though. So. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for sticking around to the end of this video. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll be sure to get to them. Um, I mean, so long as I don't forget to do that. So key things to take away here, not one size fits all and uh, make your vocals sound natural as if someone is singing to you and you're physically hearing it. Someone's real voice is singing to your real ears and Number three, have fun, because that's always the last rule. So, bam. My kind of beautiful. You've always been the perfect kind of crazy. The extra to my ordinary baby. The difference that I need. You're my kind of beautiful.